about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When God begins to prosper your spiritual work, and that's, I tell you, pride, if, if God does not help you to create a system where you cry before him daily, has destroyed many men of God, respectfully speaking. This has destroyed many great leaders. This has destroyed many great business spiritual progress. And many times, you can grow in revelation, grow in power to the point that you are no longer with us, step by step, and He's still helping us today. Spiritual pride. The moment you feel you are the only one God is using, Apostle Joshua Selman. It is only in Koinonia God is blessing people. Apostle Joshua Selman. You know, while I was preparing this message, I had to put my head and rest and think. I have said this to you and I say it out of every sense of responsibility. Truly, without exaggeration. Now it's even more. I manage an average of say 800 plus text messages in a day. And many of them like this. Apostle of the Most High God. I have searched men of God are you. If you actually believe that thing, let, I'm talking to myself now. If I actually believe that thing, I'm not only stupid, but I'm under an attack. As, as funny and childish as what I'm saying is, there are some of you who will believe it absolutely and go out of your way to create systems that reinforce those kinds of things. Many of us have gathered psychophants in our lives today because they have mastered us that this is what we want to hear. Even if you are entering the pit, you want people who gather around you. Once they can massage your ego, they have access to your life, access to your inner circle until you, they destroy you and they will turn back and show people that this is where he died. Listen to me. You've heard me say this. You know you are being transformed by the Holy Ghost when there is humility connected to your growth. The moment you begin to trade humility for revelation, you are in trouble. Now, this, I say this with every sense of love and respect. This is one of the greatest fear for my generation of ministers. You see it in Africa. One of the biggest mistakes, especially with the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in Africa generally and world over, is that the little that God has done and is doing with our lives is so garnished with a lot of pride. It even damages the beautiful thing that is there. That is not even much relative to what God wants to do. Are we together? Chances are that because of what God is doing in a ministry like this and how God continues to glorify himself, we can go back and begin to destroy ourselves with that sense of pride. How do you know you are walking in pride? When you believe, listen to me, when you believe that there are certain things you are the only one who can do and the only one who can bring is the mistake of Elijah. Elijah came to God and said, God, every other person has deserted you. Every other person does not like you. I am the only one. That's a nonsense. What are you saying? There are 7,000 others. How many preachers today, we preachers, I don't say them, we preachers, 
How many of us preachers today actually sit down and believe that without us, God's purposes will fail? Look at that level of pride. There are people who stand and speak as if every other person has backsliding. Every other person does not love the Lord. We must be careful. There is destruction that we are programming. The one who built the church is still alive. And his jealousy will make sure he defends his work to the end. Can I tell you this? As a man of God, I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting people. And God many times opens my eyes and I'm able to see these people. They themselves do not know how mighty they are in the spirit. I shared with you a story one time that I was pre preaching at a PFN crusade in Kano. And I was calling people out by word of knowledge, ministering to people, you know, people were watching with wonder, the anointing and all kinds of things. And then I called this woman out. And when the woman came out, she was an intercessor. And then she told me that every 15 days, she finishes her Bible, a house her Bible, 15 days without fail. And yet they are not on air. Yet they are not the Joshua Selmans who sit in front. And yet we can have the audacity to believe that we are the only ones God is using. Not so. My brothers, God has a mighty army. Some of them mighty and greater than the Joshua Selmans you celebrate. Nobody knows them yet. Some of them are hiding in the school of the spirit. God is using our own life to teach them lessons and train them. We must have the maturity, the wisdom, and the spirituality to know this. Are you learning something tonight? Yes. Spiritual pride. People bully one another across the body of Christ today with rema, revelation. Many people, this is what led them into divination and some of these things now. Pray, from prayer groups, you go to different campuses now, you see things that make you afraid. Everybody is trying to search for anything. Once there is Greek, Hebrew and Latin and you conjoin, then the spiritual pride that comes on account of prayer prowess. Once I can pray two hours, three hours, four hours, you can bully others to make it look you are not spiritual. <sighs> then crowd. Once you have crowd inside and outside, we are the only ones God is using. Brothers and sisters, it is not true. It is an attack from the pit of hell. There is such a thing as spiritual pride. The more you see the glory of God, can I tell you this? The more you are exposed to God, I'm telling you the more you see your inadequacy before Him and the need to remain humble. Many times when I enter and I come to sit and I watch people looking at me in my mind, I'm just saying, oh God, Someone was at a pastor's conference. It's a story that I heard years ago. They were at a pastor's conference. Ministers were praying. And our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, was there. And when it was time to pray, mass prayer, everybody was praying. And then the man had the opportunity to lie down not too far, as he said, from Baba Deboe. And pastors were praying, Lord, the grace on this ministry must come upon my life. I'm tired of 300 members. I'm tired of others' power. And when he came close, for more than one hour or so, he said, all that Baba Deboy was saying is, Mercy, O God. Mercy, O God. Mercy, O God. That's how you know people who have grown. Others who just came, Lord, fire. Lord, bring partners now. Why do I have this quality of sheep? Bring people who can help me and, and change this and stop this work from being hard. Someone else is crying and saying, Lord, mercy, keep me to the end. Mercy, the humility it takes to finish. Can I tell you this? It is a caution that God gave me. And I continue to obtain grace from God to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit. That as He opens new graces and new vistas of spiritual reality that we are patient with people today many people come who are just starting ministry and they come apostle and sometimes they almost want to worship you can i tell you this spiritual pride works in two angles there is the one you create the people who praise you by yourself you praise yourself but there, there are others you will not create it but when you see it you will sap that you will enjoy it like squeezing an orange 
until there is nothing left. It's still pride. There are times that you have to go out of your way to thank them and say thank you for this. But please be careful. There are things people want to do in my life today. If I'm to allow people to do everything they want to do in my life, it will almost become another religion. People will now almost worship Joshua Selman. Ah, may I not live to see that day? Oh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Looking at me now and following online, many of you, the devil is already programming this. Spiritual pride. That's what has driven many people to go on 40 days dry. 10 days dry. You ask them why. They tell you, no, we started ministry with these guys. I can't remain like this. And you think it's a very nice motivation. No, I can't be. Some of you are listening to me. Some of you, that's what even brought you here. And God is looking at the corruption in your heart. There's nothing wrong with prayer and fasting. Don't get me wrong. But that that motif is already dead. It's already gone. Spiritual pride. Why do you think people go to dabble into all sorts of demonic things? It is because people are looking for a name. Spiritual pride. Take it down for me. Let me sing that Sinat song. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I see you, the more I want to see you, Jesus, more of you. Listen, historically speaking, do you know, and I say this with every sense of respect, one of God's generals, I may not mention his name, because I'm speaking to a global audience, but one of these generals, that was one of the things that brought him down. He was a mighty general of God. Used of God powerfully. But he got to a point where people told him, you are one of these prophets, Elijah specifically. And when they said that for a while, he said, no, 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 our glory be to God. I don't mean the spirit of Elijah. Elijah incarnate. You are that Elijah that Revelation said would come again. Can I tell you this? In the state of pride, there is nothing you will not believe. That's why it's good to ask God for mercy. Hmm. I want more of you. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. Listen, and eventually they now made him believe that he was Elijah. And after a while, he started believing it. And he went and saw the regalia. At that time, there was no social media. So you would not really know what God was doing at the other side of the world. It was at that time that the woman that we call Maria Woodward Eater, God now lifted her. And when that man heard that God was using someone outside of him, he persecuted that woman seriously. Number one, that she was a woman. Number two, who are you for God to use you? I'm the only one that God is using here. And thank God he served God, but he did not finish well. The things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture some of these people have allowed their scars to be seen not to condemn them we honor them in life and even in death for the contribution that they brought but there are lessons for us to learn there is nobody destroyed who starts with the potential of destruction keep going as god is lifting you spiritually apostle joshua selman 
You know, sometimes I watch with shock and wonder. It's almost, it's even embarrassing as I'm saying it now. Please forgive me. But I mean, people can give you this godlike. I know it's a sincere way to honor you. There's nothing wrong with that. Except that sometimes people can give you all this description and all this spiritual paraphernalia. And if you are not careful, you will fall into it with joy. Joshua Selman. I can stand now and begin to pray. And the power of God moves in this place. And people are blessed. Spiritual pride. On account of the progress you are making in the spirit. On account of the fact that God it has so pleased him by his sheer mercy and grace. To lift you to a position where you now represent the voice of God to a generation. I warn myself every day, God can do without you. God can do without you. Mr. Man, you are a man. You are only of God. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're changing someone in this city, don't do it without me. I submit to you by God there are many men of God there are many people who need a retreat fast to go back and break down before God and say my maker and my king everything I ever have it came from you and thank God for the spirit of revelation thank God for the ability to minister healing thank God for the nations who are hearing what we are doing but Lord, I pray, the pride that comes based on spiritual achievements, may it never, never, never. While you are saying it, you will look like a fool. But you are already signing your relevance for the next move of God. See, this is why you see a lot of people used by God. And then a time comes, you see another move of God. They are still alive. And yet you see, this is not backsliding. It just looks like God says, no, no, no. I can't make you do with this again. Some of you here are leaders over small prayer groups. You are already copying all kinds of nonsense. It doesn't matter even if it's from me. We have to be careful the things we are learning. Pride that destroys people. It is as a result of this pride that dishonor has crept into the body. Everybody is correcting everybody. Someone who has not even started ministry. Standing at the back of the tree and calling fathers and insulting everybody. Spiritual pride. Till today when I have the honor and the privilege of meeting any of our fathers in the faith or anyone who has gone ahead. It does not matter what they are saying. I sit down quietly as if I do not know anything in ministry. I submit to you brothers and sisters and people of God. The man talking to you is not stupid. By the grace of God, forgive me if I sound arrogant. I have seen honor. I have seen the grace of God. I have seen Jesus. I have stood before kings. I know what it means to have spiritual progress. God has helped me. But the way up is to remain on your knees. Many of you are simple. You are not humble. Simplicity is not humility. Humility is not refusing to acknowledge what God has done in your life. No. No. I remember one time years ago when I finished that preaching, someone sent me a text and said, I've been calling you and you did not pick. I said, look, they said I'm humble, not stupid. Do you know my activities? Don't, don't let people blackmail you emotionally just because you said you are humble. 
No. But can I tell you the truth? My brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. Pride based on spiritual achievement. God forbid, but if I die today, I sleep and I do not wake up. It will not change what God is doing on earth. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Never get to a point in your life where you believe God cannot do without you. And he says, really? No. It is a privilege beyond imagination to be part of God's program. It is a privilege to help build and bless people. It is a privilege to be granted the gift of influence and access. It is, it is a privilege. There are many things today that I know from this scripture I did not study it. It's the spirit of revelation that brought it. I cannot take credit for it. There are things that I told you I have seen people who have fasted and prayed more than me. Years ago, a gentleman, most times when people are fasting, sometimes I join them and round it up with them. There was a gentleman who fasted for 400 days, 6 to 6. I rounded up the 400 day with him. And yet that person did not carry any power. More than the spiritual activities we are doing, believe me, it is the mercy of God. I know people who have studied more books about church growth than me. I know people who have gone to different theological seminaries. I know people who have had the opportunity. They have... So the little and the bits that God does in and through our lives, as we ascend this mountain spiritually, may we ever remain humble. And I'm saying this to those who are also leaders in this ministry or leaders all around. We have to learn this. Men can clap for you, that is important. But you must get to a point where you say, this is enough. My life is to see Jesus glorified. Because you see, there's something the anointing and the glory of God does upon a man. It makes it look like you are not human again. And when people stand in awe of that glory, that majesty, the wisdom that comes from God, many times they begin to look for sincere ways of expressing honor and appreciation to you. You are the one who needs to be wise to know when it has gone beyond honor into something else and to lovingly draw that line and keep that line drawn. Are we together? Everybody say spiritual pride. Please shout it. Say spiritual pride. God is speaking to us right now. There are people who have not been patient with younger ministers as they rise. Because of pride. I've told you this. When you are mentoring and raising people. Part of the responsibility of fatherhood. Is that you must be able to take a lot of nonsense from people as they are growing. You must know. And be patient with people the same way God was patient with us. Spiritual pride. Revelation. Rema. Healing. Prophecy. Africa. I speak to you by the voice of the Spirit. Men and women of God across this nation and across this continent. May we obtain grace from God to be humble. Some of these God-like things we continue to do. We need to pray that God will have mercy on us. Otherwise, we'll keep falling like rain one by one at the instance of pride. Pride based on revelation. Pride based on oratory. Pride based on prophetic prowess. Pride based on the miraculous. Pride based on wisdom. Pride based on all of these things. Anything spiritual. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. So you want to keep growing spiritually. You want to keep accessing supernatural levels of power. Let every lifting that God brings in your life. Culminate to a greater level of humility. Lord, I am so honored that you have granted me this access. Sometimes when I'm sitting before the Lord in the night and some of these revelations come, tears just come out of my eyes and I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. 
thank you. You have been merciful to me and I'm grateful. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love, oh. Spiritual pride. The second area of pride is God helping us. Hmm. Tonight's message is hard, bar. Just receive it with love. It is, it is the way we make. The maker is making men. The second aspect of pride is called the pride of life. Please write it down. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16. What is the pride of life? The pride of life is the self-exaltation. You see, that, that, on that inordinate feeling of importance, that, that, that not confidence, self-exaltation based on obvious achievements. The pride of life is for people who have achieved something tangible. If you have not achieved anything, you can have pride, but not the pride of life. The pride of life is the self-glorification that is derived in the presence of obvious achievements. You have results to show for it. First John 2, 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The pride of life. Jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 23 to 24. The prophet speaking by the Spirit admonishes us. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It does not mean to not celebrate your wisdom. Uh -uh. You know what pride is? The refusal to acknowledge God as the basis for your success. The refusal, the ashamedness, the moment you are embarrassed to let people see Jesus as the basis for your victory. You want to so enjoy that spotlight. You don't want God to interrupt this spotlight. Lord, I've waited all my life to shine. And now that the spotlight is on me, Jesus, get out of the way. Let me not have any interruption. Let me enjoy and savor the moment. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man uh -huh, glory in his riches. What is the pride of the believer? 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this. That he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Everyone say the pride of life. This is where all other groups now come in. Politicians, successful people, businessmen. God intends to lift us, but we must be careful. Our world has a very superior architecture. They can design a house where you will die, where you rise. They will consciously, we may not know, I've arrived, we call it. I don't know what... The, I've arrived, that's the one I know. Are we together? Count. You know what made the rich man foolish? Read the Bible. It was not his money. The problem was not the rich. The problem was the fool. You know what made him foolish? He built his bands and stored the... And God said, today your soul is required of you. My father used to tell us many years ago, that no matter who you are, no matter where you go to, make sure you fight pride. I think it's one of the most, most outspoken virtue that he pounded in our heads growing. Pride. May God bless him for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Pride. My power and my might. I am this. I made this happen. You hear people make all kinds of statements. I've taught you that everything comes from God through men. 
Pride is when men want to become the source of everything. I can lift you. I can do this. I can frustrate you. Ah. We have to be careful. There is a God that sits in heaven. The monarch of the universe. So whilst you achieve all that you achieve using these keys that we keep sharing, as God lifts you, as God blesses you, as God, as God honors you, make sure that you unashamedly stand before God and before men and tell them the Lord is the doer of these things. You hear the testimonies week in, week out. All of the mighty and marvelous things. If God has done anything good, in and through this life and in and through this ministry and in and through any life here he deserves the glory so when men clap for you appreciate them but be sure to point them to the one who is the doer of every good thing and god says you had a chance to stand and serve this moment and you are directing people to me you are ready for the next level let's go and he will lift you fearfully help those under the anointing there please fearfully to another level this is one of the secrets and one of the graces that i prayed for and i continue to pray for deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 11 deuteronomy chapter 8 remember he gave them a warning koinonia is, is the lord speaking to you tonight he gave a warning beware that thou forget not the lord thy god in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I commanded this day. Next verse. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full. You see something happens to people when they are not hungry again. Hunger is not the best. But it has a way of making you to remember your maker. Is that true? When you are trekking it's easy to pray in tongues while you are trekking. When you don't have a job, you have something to wake up in the night and pray for. In the name of Jesus, this spirit, you fought my father minus me. You can pray till morning. When you are trusting God for some breakthrough. But when this happens, there is something about men being full. Remember the five, five, five loaves and two fish? They were hungry and they listened. What happened when they were full? They threw everything and went away. There's no record in the Bible of them telling Jesus, thank you. They left. He said, no problem. Leave them. Gather my crumbs for me. Twelve baskets. The same people who were once hungry. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full. One level. And hast built houses and dwelt therein. Next verse. And when your herds and flocks multiply. And thy silver and gold is multiplied you see the keyword there multiplied multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied then thy heart shall be lifted up that's the bible's definition of pride when your heart is lifted up no longer your hands again it used to be your hands lifted up but when you become proud your heart is lifted up and thou forget the lord thy god which brought thee forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage uh -huh. who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought and where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16 who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he may humble thee that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end 17 and thou say in thy heart the classic definition of pride the pride of life my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this world my connection is what gave me this electoral victory my business connection i am such an astute businessman you will tell yourself i am such a great preacher i am let it not be that when this has happened and men continue to clap for you you say my power and my might pride therefore is the refusal to acknowledge god before men as the doer of every good thing in your life either directly or indirectly usual passion 
an unusual passion for the attention of men an unusual passion for self-glorification a desire for men to keep singing your sing your praises or to sing it to yourself is pride that th there is such a craving for attention once the spotlight is not on you there is trouble is unusual craving for the spotlight to be the person there it doesn't matter what else let the light the darkness be on everybody but once it is on me that's it maybe i just described someone here maybe you are outside following online from whatever nation and the lord is saying this is you don't fight what he's saying the goal of god's word is to purify the washing of the water by the word the craving there are people who go out of their way to make sure that they ring bells to make sure everybody knows what is they are doing you buy a new shoe the whole world must know you bought a new shoe is that true you bought a new bible they must first see how the old one was very old then they see the new one to show you are spiritual some of these things are unnecessary please hear me it's a hard teaching tonight but it's the holy ghost speaking to you symptoms of pride what is the symptom of pride embarrassment listen the moment you begin to become embarrassed to acknowledge god publicly is a symptom of pride before god lifted you you could kneel down and lie down and roll on the floor but right now you are you make sure you are calculated i i can't let this my this my expensive cloth on the ground even god knows that it's not cheap the ones that i bought it the amount that i know he saw me roll on the ground with that one and god says this is for me the 24 elders take up their golden crown not not rubber crown not metallic crown golden crown they drop it on the ground and they say holy 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 that's what keeps them as elders so the day they stop doing that they are no longer elders that's what keeps them as elders holy to him who sits on the throne they don't worship everybody in heaven the one to be worshipped is clear to him who sits on the throne the pride of life nothing wrong with getting all the good things can you stand in front of your mansion and roll on the ground before God and say Lord you are the doer of this let men devils and angels know that if it had not been the Lord by my side now may Israel say God is increasing you in ministry and you stand before men I'm not talking of shake, sh faking and carrying a form of pride whereas a humility and your heart is proud no that you can sincerely you see people can discern the purity of what you are doing you can stand here and be saying oh god you are the doer and people know that it's just talk in your heart you are saying i'm the doer there is absolutely nothing that you see happening in this house by the grace of god that would not happen if i'm not here it's a privilege to receive and to spearhead what god is doing it's a revelation we must have some of us money has brought a lot of pride there's nothing wrong with having money but many times pride money i have millions i have estates thank god congratulations we appreciate and respect you for paying that price to have this but can i tell you 10 minutes without breathing and all that thing it is wicked people who will fight over it while you are gone. Listen, realize the brevity of life outside of the help of God. It is, it is when you wake up in the morning you can think of doing real estate. It is when you wake up in the morning you can think of preaching. If it did not wake me this morning, there will be no rema. There will be no revelation. There will be no koinonia. So you can say thank you jesus before men and they say why are you falling in our hand 
we know that you are an intelligent person you are a professor par excellence and he said the fact that my brain is working i don't make the brain work i only read through a brain that is working the one who made the brain work is the one who deserves the glory can i tell you this many of us i'm sharing with you a secret that's why you found out that you stopped rising a long time ago go back to that place where you started with god roll on the floor and say jesus you are the one who i repent forgive me for the foolishness of forgetting about you i started thinking about my titles every time i see anything good whether it's a text whether whatever it is that people do i just stand before him and i say lord you know you see my heart i never had plans for anything if you never bless me if you never give me ministry i am still grateful but that you have done this i return back i'm telling you sincerely and i'm only saying this because i'm teaching on this i return back every time from the miracle service or from any service once i'm done and all things are done i get down on my knees and i say father you have done it again thank you thank you thank you thank you while i'm saying it text messages are coming from all over the world mighty man of god i say lord that is dedicated to you they are just trying to say you are great what they are trying to say is galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me but lord i'm like a host as that glory is passing may no devil trap it and kill me down there mm -mm. let it pass and go to him who is due all the glory all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh please help those on the other all the glory belongs All the glory belongs to you, oh God One more time All the glory belongs All the glory belongs to you, oh God Hear me No matter who you are and no matter what god gives you if you are flying a private jet you are not the wind that is holding the jet you only had money to buy it from a man who manufactured it i'm not being sarcastic i'm only challenging you if you win an election as you sit down on that seat while people are clapping just tell them thank you excuse them out lock the door of your office and roll on the ground say lord i knew that i would have lost this election you are the doer and god says because you have done this i vow that you will remain here and anybody that tries to fight you i will scatter them into pieces god helps you as a man of god every sunday you come if you see one member that comes to share what god has to say give god thanks oh if i come here and i find 10 people i will preach with the same fire and the same passion i stand before the god who called me and i'm telling you this it's not about the crowd no it is an honor to talk to one person about jesus to make an altar call and to be in partnership with the holy ghost to save lives listen to me the car you have in your house came by his mercy the house you have came by his mercy i have houses in europe i have houses in america congratulations there are people who have houses but they are mad today their brains are not coordinated again to even travel there as the, the houses they have everywhere their prayer is for survival lord let me leave can i tell you this the most dangerous thing about pride is not that you will be fought the most dangerous thing about pride is who will fight you the bible says god resisted if men fight you you can go to god and say my father and my maker men are disturbing me if demons fight you you can go to god and say this three months again you can use his name if god fights you will you use his name to cast him the name of the lord is the highest 
And if the one, the owner of the name is fighting you, every other altar will join him to fight you too. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you how you know God is fighting a man. Everything fights him too. You, when everything is fighting you, I tear it from me. The hand of God is there resisting you. Everything. Favor will fight you. Good things will fight you. Prophecy will fight you. It is dangerous for God to be against a man. God, you gave me this beauty. I'm a beautiful woman, beautiful lady. And God says, nonsense. If you die, your beauty will not resurrect you. You acknowledge him. Lord, I am a great man. It's because I'm intelligent. That's why companies are calling on me. And God says, nonsense. Ah. It is not of him that will it. Nor of him that run it. But of the Lord that showeth mercy. I share with you a secret. It's one of the graces that work in this house. Sometimes we see people say, Apostle, you are humble, you are simple. And I say, my humility, it didn't come from my background. Just like that. It's a revelation. I am aware that God can fight a man. It is dangerous to be at the other side of that battle. Rewards of humility. We're about to pray. Please sit down and write this down. Rewards of humility. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4. Please never forget this scripture. Can we read it together? Proverbs 22 and verse 4. Are you ready? One to read. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. One more time. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. Are you seeing that riches is not the same as honor? You can have riches and not have honor. You can have riches and honor and not have life. There is a relationship between untimely death and pride. There is a relationship between humility and longevity. James chapter 4 from verse 6. Then we go to verse 10. James 4. But he giveth more grace. One of the blessings there. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Please go to verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, Koinonia, and he shall lift you up. That's where the secret is. Koinonia, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Apostle Joshua Selman, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Man of God, businessman, politician, whoever and wherever, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and there is a reward for it. He will lift you. So when you see a people who you never see their end, they have mastered this ladder, this lift called humility. What is humility? It is not denying what God has done in your life. Vocally, publicly, intentionally, continually as the basis that when it's all said and done, more than your intellect, more than your business at the doer of every good thing that's humility so you can stand before your estates you can stand before all of your credentials and all, all of that you can stand before the prosperity the bank accounts carrying the billions world over wonderful they are only profitable when you stand and say lord it is not unto these things but unto you i lift my hands and i lift my voice and I will let the world know that it is because of you that these things are before me. We are not ashamed to tell the world today, world over, that Jesus is the reason for what we call koinonia today. Joshua Selman is nothing without him. Koinonia is nothing without him. 
It's one thing to have the ability to preach and teach and heal and minister. But it's another thing for God to draw people from world over to come and listen and to submit to the grace of God committed to you. Man of God, never get to a point in your life where you become too big to acknowledge Jesus. Thank God for all of these little things here and there, the security that help. For, I, I tell you, I have a confession. You ask the protocol department and the security people, this is my fight with them. They are doing their job professionally. But if it's up to me, I will enter this place, you will not know. If I have a way of just entering there to carry my Bible, once it's time, I just appear here and preach and disappear. I will do it with joy. It's just that there are some levels in life, no matter what happens, there's nothing you can do about it. I know that while some of you watch all these things, some of you are admiring it. And that's what drives you. Be careful. God is warning you now. God is warning you now. God is warning you now. You are laughing, but God is serious. God is warning you now. Read yourself from all of these lusts. You will be celebrated for sure. Nations will call you blessed for sure. But let them be the one to clap while you point them to Jesus. Forever Jesus will remain glorified in my life. Glorified in this ministry. And glorified in your life also. That when men look at you and say from whence cometh this lifting. Others are saying there is a casting down. What is happening to your business that you are rising in leaps and bounds. I just hear you open a new office. You don't just laugh and say well say it again. No. Don't say they know. Tell them. You are the doer. Jesus I acknowledge you. And they say, please leave those spiritual things. What did you do? I tell them, no, 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 no. I will not leave it. This is how it happened. I don't know how it happened for others. What is the secret to this? Your peace. Your children are well behaved. Everybody is respectful. Who says because they know me? Go and ask them how disciplined their father and their mother are. No. Am I wasting your time? Can I tell you this? You've heard me say it. When I had this encounter with the Lord, where he taught me the lifting power of humility, this was what the Lord told me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. This is what God told me. Ah, for men to see you, that's, that's fine. John chapter 3 and verse 30 must be the lesson that everybody takes home today as far as humility is concerned he must increase but i must decrease decrease does not mean diminish decrease does not mean go back no that you exalt him how do you know you are humble when men look at you they remember jesus not you when men look at you they know they see all the miracles they see the signs and the wonders they see god lifting you and all they can say is lord you are a wonder when men look at you and it's only your praises they sing something is wrong with your approach for everything god has done in this life for everything god has done in this ministry truly to him be the glory to him be the glory to him be the honor no man on earth should give glory to himself all the glory listen let me show you what humility does you stand here lord you are the lifter of my heart i give you all the praise and god says you have done this at this level you don't have a car you don't have a bike you are not doing anything and you are acknowledging me let's go higher you don't know that the, the ultimate goal is to take you there once you are here people say my god you are already at this level and the Holy Spirit to say, remember what you did when you were here. Do it again. He's giving and pride. You said, I'm comfortable. I mean, now you can see me. And some people remain here forever. 
till they find out they are already down here again. But some other people stand here and while people are looking at you, you are even, you are distracted. You are not distracted by what they are doing. They call you all kinds of names. Daddy, Apostle, whatever. Thank God for those things. But your attention is with Jesus. Are you ready for this? He lifts you to the next level. You became a governor. You became a senator. You became a man of God. Now he trusted you. One branch, two branch, two branches, three branches. He now helped you. And he said, Lord, even at this point, may the nation see you through my life. Ah. And men look at you and say, be honest, Jerry. Enjoy this thing. Enjoy this moment. And sometimes you can be distracted. And then he calls you back. I have other people who need to rise. If you want to make this space vacant, I will fight you to make it vacant and leave others. And you say, no. no. I remember how you brought me. And he will still find you in the night rolling. And he says, you are ready. He will move you to another one. When he moves you, you will not be alone. You will find other people that he moved there too. They will now start distracting you. Let's focus on laughing at those who are down. And you tell them, I don't know how you got here. But me, I know how God brought me here. And I will not be distracted. Many times when you are up here, it looks like there are other people below you. Let's gossip, let's mock, let's push them, let's fight anybody who wants to come down. There are people who will remain here for 30 years until they start going down. By the time they are 50, they are back here. You say, I thought I used to know you here. They say condition is a lie. The path of the just is as a shining light. When your tomorrow becomes greater, becomes worse than your yesterday, it is pride. A man's tomorrow should not be like this. No! You know people who are walking in humility because you never see them at the last level you saw them. You are right here. At this point, people are already calling you things. Papa, if you are in ministry, you are mentoring people. Everybody, they are just blessing you. Inviting you around the whole world. You are in hotels. You are having all kinds of cars. Jeeps you are enjoying. Everything zero. And then one night, if God wants to help you, He will call you and say, My son, I'm still waiting for you. Where we used to meet before. Don't distract me, oh God. The spotlight is on me. This was what I looked for growing up. This was what I wanted. People said I would not make it. Now that I've made it, let me stand so that I can savor the moment. And it says, my son, we still have other heights to climb. Don't stop here. But there are others. May you be part of them tonight. In my life, be glorified. Be glorified. In my life, be glorified. Be glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. While you are busy singing this song and living this song with your life, Men will open their eyes and find you here. You are standing with kings and nations. And they say, we used to know him. Ah, humility has a lifting power. It will shift your background, shift your gender, shift what men said. They can say while you rise. They can talk while you are lifted. I tell you this. The end of a man who is truly humble cannot be predicted by any mortal man on earth there is no prophet there is no apostle whose eye can see as far as a man with humility can go only God can tell the end of a humble man just when you think he has attained that God now lifts him again to another season hear me 
We're about to pray. The Lord brought you to church tonight to show you that there is a secret. Men do not just rise. God is the lifter of men. Are you ready to pray? Let me give you one key. You have to write this down. One key. What is the key to humility? The key to humility is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Please, our global family, the body of Christ, as many who will follow this, do not forget. There are eight words that I want you to remember for the rest of your life as the key to humility. The A part. But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. But thou shall remember not just the Lord thy God. Hear me. One of the greatest keys to humility is remembrance. Remember where God took you from. And remember who took you. If you can remember where God took you from, and you can remember who took you, you have mastered the key to beating life at its game. Believe me. When David stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog that you are coming to me with this sling? He said, God who delivered me, I remember. Success has a way of eroding your memory. That's why there are certain pains and certain things that you are around you is looking for favor. And you can never hear people who tell you the truth again. Time to come, you will have to be your own counselor. Let yesterday be your counselor. Remember how God lifted you. Man of God, remember. Once upon a time, you had no church, no reputation. Politician, remember, once upon a time, you trekked without shoes. Every time men forget, they stop moving forward. Remember. 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 This is what I do all the time. Let me speak to someone here. Keep the memory of your pain now. You will need it tomorrow. Don't waste your pain. Your pain is a miracle. The scar, listen, the injury on your hand today is what will keep you when you sit on the throne. Till today, Jesus still has the scar. The scar reminds him of his love for man again. Every time you see that scar, you remember. Every time God did wondrous things to the nation of Israel, listen to me, he gave them instructions. He says, find a way of archiving this. If your children ask you and say, why are you doing this? Tell them, oh Israel, you forgot too soon that for 430 years you were in the land of slavery. Now you began to build idols. One of the ways that God brings men to humility when they forget him is to lift his hand and you will see what the devil does in your life. Every time people were proud, he gave them over to their enemies. It's in your Bible. Africa, could this be why we are going through what we are going through? Nigeria, could this be why we are going through? If my people who are called by my name, what's the first thing they do? Not pray. Not pray. We have been praying. We have been praying. Humble themselves. It is not because the arm of the Lord is too short. Man of God, it does not take God anything to expand your ministry. It does not take anything for the anointing you desire. It is prosperity. I dare to tell you there are enough destiny helpers, enough ideas, enough systems and structures for God to lift you. Read your Bible and see the lifting power of God. When you become at the center stage of your life, forget about the hand of God. I remember, remember your goodness. I remember, remember your love. I remember, remember your faithfulness. I remember, remember your grace. 
I remember a time in my life when I was going to preach. No bike, no nothing. It was raining. I remember trekking in the rain while the rain was pouring on me. I was praying in tongues and going for the meeting. And look what he's done today. And then you forget. Keep that memory. That's what God will use to remind you. Oh, Bilonia, remember that one time you were soaking Gary. And you drink and say to die. To the Lord be all the glory. But today, you have chains of restaurants around the world. Oh, let it never enter your heart. Oh God, anything you give me, let it stay outside me. Sit in your position, alone. Jealously guarded by my passion for you. Don't think I wasted your time tonight. I gave you the key to the next level. Some of you, as a company, you need to do this. Go back to God. Tomorrow, when you go to work, tell the people to excuse you a bit. Lock that door and kneel down. And say, Father, you may even need to pray your local dialect. Maybe it will give you room to express it more. And say, God of heaven, you are the one who has shown me mercy. Forgive me if for any reason I joined an association of unwise people. And I started forgetting you in the name of celebrating success. Be careful with some of these groups and associations. They, are, they may not be wrong, but we must be careful. Because some of them mislead us into feeling embarrassed that is the Lord. Once upon a time you could not afford a good shoe. But now, you can even buy the whole boutique. Oh, please do not forget. Thou shalt remember. Remember yesterday and remember the Lord. Remember yesterday and remember the Lord. Take this message and give anybody you know and you love sincerely. Use it to train your children. If God has blessed you and you are a blessed man with substance, sit your children down. Don't just show them the money. Tell them the stories. Tell them, young boys, you have the privilege to eat anything you eat today and travel around the world. But it was not always like that. I came from a family where we had to use well, to use well to draw water out. God began to help me. If the only thing I give you people is money, I've destroyed you. This is a mistake. And I say it finally before we pray. Most leaders in Africa and Nigeria are making this mistake. We are not giving those who look up to us the stories. We are only giving them the rewards. So a young man now does not know that ministry needs stamina and endurance and pain. Why? Because he just came and received impartation. Received maybe three or five cars. And had his mentor or spiritual father come and stand as a leverage to speak for him. An increase is coming. And he can look and be laughing at people and say, shame on you. Five years, no membership. Because of that leverage. Pain is a gift. Make sure you give those you really love. Don't inflict pain on them. The testimony of your pain, I mean. Share it with them. Let them know that once upon a time you fasted and prayed. That this anointing did not just drop because you read your Bible. And tell them the privilege you now enjoy, do not abuse it. Carelessness comes when process is not known. When people ignore process, the result is carelessness. I'm going to give us two, three minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry before God. I will do my own here. The next two, three minutes, you are just going to say, Lord, if ever my heart is lifted, forgive me. Show me mercy tonight and grant me grace. Pray. You don't have to kneel down or lie down. Just cry before your maker. Please, no movement around. This is a serious moment. Go ahead and pray.
your majesty majesty forever I'm changed by your love Just remember in one minute. Remember where his majesty took you from. Their man of God. Their apostle and their prophet. Their pastor and their evangelist. Their politician. Their academician. Their millionaire. Their billionaire. Their elder statesman. Their father. Their parent. Remember where he took you from. Their student. Their great man. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your goodness. Thank you. If you have to cry, cry. If you have to sing, sing. Just a minute or two and we are done. Let him know that I am still your boy, oh God. I'm still the one you lifted. I'm still the one you helped. I'm still the one you blessed. I'm here to say how much I love you. I'm here to say how much I adore you. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. By your spirit and your grace. I'm confident you solve them, but I'm here to say I love you. I'm here to say I adore you. I'm here to say. I love you. Lord, as men look at our lives, may they see you. As men look at our lives, oh, may they see you. It is easy to see the glamour. It is easy to see the anointing. It is easy to see the spirituality and the results. It is easy to see the achievements. But Lord, tonight, we declare that we love you. We're wrapping up. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoice with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell Now I can pray for you. You don't have to kneel. Please just stand. Now I can pray for this grace that brings exaltation. I have seen it. I know it works. Believe me, there is a grace that lifts. There is a grace that grants you access to kings, to systems, to structures. There is a grace that enthrones beyond your wildest imagination. Many of us here have been lifted. We have tasted of honor and glory. 
we have seen the help of God. But I submit to you that at any level there is still more. There is still more. There is still more. Lord, may we never forget. May the nation see that you are the lifter, the blesser, the anointer, the one who prospers. May the mundane things in this life never get into us to turn our hearts and our minds away from you. May we be ever conscious. And now I pray for everyone here under the sound of my voice. I pray for our global family. I pray for you who is a man of God who has been trusting God for lifting. I pray for you who is a businessman who is at a defining moment. You've been praying for lifting. I pray for politicians, members of parliament, those in government, those in ministry, those trusting God to lift even financially. There is grace. I have seen this grace work. I have seen it work wonders. And therefore in the name of Jesus Christ, as instructed by God, I stretch my hands over everyone here. The grace that lifts the grace that exalts even through humility may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now hear me for some of you this is the beginning of the fulfillment of prophecy all the things you saw in your dreams God was waiting for you to hear this sermon before the angels are activated because where God is taking you you need this message to remain therefore I declare now that you have heard it I call upon my God and your God Father in a fearful way begin to lift people from tonight spiritual liftings financial liftings intellectual liftings ministerial liftings in the name of Jesus Christ Access to systems Access to the hearts of kings May that grace come upon you now Never will you call for help and be left alone again In the name of Jesus Christ Hear me Anyone who is due for promotion of all sorts And has been kept by reason of any in the name that is above all things, may this grace come upon you and lift you to a sign and a wonder. Those in ministry, co-laborers in the gospel, I stand in agreement with you that in the name of Jesus, everything that has taunted the growth of your churches, your ministries, your ministerial platforms, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, receive this grace and rise. Some of us have been at the same level for a long time. You've not gone down, but you've not gone up either. I pray for you, by this grace, ye have encompassed this mountain long enough. Rise up now in the name of Jesus. Hear me, any spirit that has taken advantage of pride in your life to keep you down, help that gentleman. Any spirit that has cooperated with your ignorance in this area. Some of you may have been arrogant based on this psychological thing. It's just your passion to prove a point. Your passion to be known and to be celebrated. Any spirit that has taken advantage of you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cast those spirits out of your life, out of your destiny, out of your destiny, in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare over your life no more stagnation. Age long doors that have refused to open, in the name of Jesus, we swing them open now. Hear me, whatever has stunted your office, your business, the works of your hands, every manifestation of pride that has come through you, directly or indirectly, or has come from your children, and even those you are raising spiritually or otherwise, 
I pray may the mercy of God speak for you. Grace to walk in true humility. Receive that grace. Grace to acknowledge Jesus as the source and the only source of your rising. May that grace be released upon you. Hear me. Any association in your life that seeks to distract you from acknowledging Jesus and anything that is planted in your heart that makes you ashamed of letting the nations know that he is the lifter, I command it out of your heart now. But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. But thou shall remember the one who lifted, the one who blessed. That grace comes upon you now. Hear me. Some of you, it will not reach the next one week. You will return back with strange testimonies of God's opening. I say this to you by the God of heaven. Some of you, before next Sunday, you will stand here to share, share some testimonies of the living power of humility. By this grace, doors that were once open and are now closed, may they be reopened again. In the name of Jesus, please wave your hands and give him praise. Thank you, Father. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Wave your hands, give him praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just a moment, let me make the altar call. Please keep standing, everyone. Let's honor those who are coming now. You are in this place. The greatest proof of pride is to refuse to acknowledge God. Alongside that, refusal to pray is pride. Because it's proof that you do not need the assistance of heaven. Refusal to study the word wherever you are. You are in this auditorium, around the balcony or outside. I want you to run right now and come and stand before me. We have just one minute for you. God bless you as you come. Run, leave your seat and come. Don't let the devil deceive you and say, I don't want people to see me. Come to Jesus. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? Don't let anybody stop you where you are. Leave them and come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come, come. Young and old alike, come. Those who are following online, following from whatever TV station, following from any nation, I'd like you to be prepared right now. Open your heart before Jesus Christ and pray this prayer as we lead these people, our family here in prayer. Make sure you connect, pray. And those who will be watching this later on, when you get to this part of the video, the recording, make sure you join to pray. Please come, join them. We have one more minute. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Run and join them so you can be sure tonight. I love the things of God, but I'm not sure if I'm saved. Join them. Join them. Please, if you're coming, rush quickly, quickly. We're out of time. Come. Come as you are. The maker is about to make you. The lifter is about to lift you. Koinonia, can you celebrate them? Hallelujah. Please, you are joining them. Come very quickly. Now, look at me. I salute sincerely every one of you who has come here. You have come before Jesus himself, the mediator of the new covenant. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. He is able to give you a new beginning. This is a family that loves you passionately and no man condemns you. He's able to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Allow the tears to come. Don't be ashamed. Young and old, I honor you for the courage to come. The business of Jesus is a personal thing. It's not just a corporate thing. It first starts as a personal decision. Just help those under the anointing. Help them. Please, I want you to say this after me. But I want you to mean it. Jesus is here. And he's ready to receive you. And to give you a new beginning. Every one of us had to make this decision. And I'm telling you, 
that the Bible says, Whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say after me, let it be loud and clear from your heart. You are saying it before Jesus Christ, your maker, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I humble myself before you. I ask you for mercy, for cleansing. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. You rose again for my justification. Tonight, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I am born again. I am a child of God. I walk in victory. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. Thank you. We remain ever grateful for the work of salvation. Just help those under the anointing. Father, we present to you these ones that Jesus has brought to himself. It's an honor to stand to midwife this eternal process. Lord, I pray according to the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and that they begin a new journey with Jesus. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you rise from glory to glory. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, let it be a new beginning to, for you from today. You go forward ever and backward never. The door of yesterday is closed forever and you begin to make progress. No guilt in life and no fear in death. Jesus is your victory. Be blessed and be lifted. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Now there is a counselor. Please look at me all of you. Thank you. I celebrate you. There's a counselor waving his hands. Please all of you just follow them in concert. Just a minute or two. They'll just have your details and appraise you and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Please celebrate them. Celebrate them. Be careful as you walk with the cranes. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.